Hello everyone and welcome to the second module of the DSM class. This week we will continue our exploration of the world of mental disorders. We will explore the following questions. First, how do we define a mental disorder? Next, is there a need to classify them? Next, what's the history of DSM? What are the ethical and legal aspects of the diagnosis? Also, has DSM been a subject of critique? Finally, what are some of the implications for social work profession? A mental disorder is essentially a disturbance in cognition, emotion regulation, or behavior. We can also assume that there is a dysfunction in the psychological, biological, or developmental processes that has caused this disturbance. However, if a child loses his mother and that child lives in a culture where people usually react to mother's death by crying, being sad and withdrawn, this does not constitute a mental disorder. Also, we do not say that people with socially deviant behaviors necessarily have mental disorders. Unless the person has an underlying dysfunction, such as thought disorder. A diagnosis does not mean that treatment is necessary. Also, the treatment may be necessary even if a diagnosis isn't made. The primary purpose of DSM-5 is to assist trained clinicians in the diagnosis of their patients' mental disorders as part of a case formulation. Such assessment leads to a fully informed treatment plan for each individual. DSM helps professionals communicate with each other. The case formulation for clients must involve in addition to the clinical history, a concise summary of the social, psychological, and biological factors that may have contributed to developing a given mental disorder. It is not sufficient to simply check off the symptoms in the diagnostic criteria to make a mental disorder diagnosis. The ultimate goal of a clinical case formulation is to use the available contextual and diagnostic information in developing a comprehensive treatment plan that is informed by the individual's cultural and social context. Also, the reimbursements paid by insurance companies are often connected to particular diagnoses and treatment approaches. Finally, classification is important in the clinical research on psychopathology. You can see disorder codes before each disorder name. ICD-10-CM stands for International Classification of Diseases, 10th Revision, Clinical Modification. The ICD-10 is copyrighted by the World Health Organization, WHO, which owns and publishes the classification. WHO has authorized the development of an adaptation of ICD-10 for use in the United States for U.S. government purposes. You can follow the link on the slide if you need to search for particular codes. The American Psychiatric Association first published a predecessor of DSM in 1844, as a statistical classification of institutionalized mental patients. It was designed to improve communication about the types of patients cared for in the hospitals. This forerunner to DSM also was used as a component of the full U.S. Census. After World War II, DSM evolved through four major additions into a diagnostic classification system for psychiatrists, other physicians, and other mental health professionals that describe the essential features of the full range of mental disorders. The current edition, DSM-5, builds on the goal of its predecessors of providing guidelines for diagnoses that can inform treatment and management decisions. Now, I want you to watch a video about changes in the DSM. You will have an opportunity to check your knowledge after watching the video.